placebo effect. In clinical trials intended to test the potency and effect of drugs, researchers often randomly assign one of two treatment courses to the study's participants. The first group gets the actual medication. The second group, called the control group, is unknowingly given a placebo. This is a pill or copy of the drug that intentionally does not work. This method has helped scientists measure the effects of drugs for decades. It allows them to clearly distinguish the consequences of taking the medication against not taking it. Placebos weren't intended to work on their own. Still, a strange phenomenon called the placebo effect comes up in some trial patients. Since the participants are initially unaware that they're not receiving the medication, some actually start showing the medicine's benefits. Researchers are baffled, and it only gets weirder. A 2015 study from McGill University has found that even though the placebo effect is now widely known worldwide, its effect is actually getting stronger with time. More people perceive the imaginary medical benefits that sugar pills should not provide. Scientists believe that the placebo effect is due to a person's expectation that the treatment will have a remarkable impact. This makes little sense to experts who have been unable to solidly identify how patients' brains are tricked into imagining cures. Other studies suggest that the placebo effect may be a mutation coded into DNA, leaving many wondering what other secrets are hiding in the genetic code. Libet Experiment In the latter half of the 20th century, numerous neuroscience experiments claimed to prove that choices are made in the brain, even before the rest of the body is consciously aware of them. If this is right, then this seems to undermine the possibility of free will. The most famous test to prove this is the Libet Experiment. In 1983, USCF neuroscientist Benjamin Libet published results of a controversial study some see as proof humans have no free will. During the experiment, test subjects were hooked up to a brain scanner and asked to flex their wrists whenever they wished to. Participants were also asked to look at a clock and write down the time at which they made each decision to move. Libet found that the test subjects made a decision to move their wrists, on average, about 0.15 to 0.05 seconds before their muscles actually flexed. However, their brain activity showed signs of preparing to flex, on average, about 0.55 seconds before their wrist moved. Some say these findings indicate that the brain had already decided through some unconscious mechanism and that free will is non-existent. In the study, he writes, quote, The initiation of the freely voluntary act appears to begin in the brain unconsciously, well before the person consciously knows he wants to act. Is there then any role for conscious will in the performance of a voluntary act? In his later years, Libet actually pushed back on the notion that he proved. He stated that while any initial action may have unconscious origins, our consciousness probably does hold some sort of veto power to suppress or redirect unconscious urges. Some like to think that every decision is made out of instinct and intuition, as this concept seems to make sense at at least an instinctive level. Still, it remains difficult to define. North-South Cows A study published in 2009 proposes that cows can sense the Earth's magnetic field and use it to line up their bodies, which makes them face either north or south when in a resting position. The discovery was made by a team led by Heinrich Burda of the University of Duisburg Essen in Germany. Burda wasn't initially a cow expert. His primary field was actually a small underground creature, the naked mole rat. They're blind, but have developed a kind of internal compass, as they always build their sleeping nests in the southern front of their small homes. Wondering if humans did something similar, Burda and his fellows logged into Google Earth. They began looking at campgrounds all over the world, but the tents were challenging to see. Then he noticed a herd of cows visible in nearby pastures, and he decided to study cattle behavior instead. He said, quote, We just stopped looking at camping people and started to look at cows. It was almost an accident. The team analyzed more than 8,500 cows, all through Google Earth images throughout the world. They came to the groundbreaking discovery that all cows tended to face either north or south while grazing or sleeping. The animal shadows in the pictures suggest that most of the images examined were mostly taken on cloudless, sunny days. Still, neither the weather nor the time of day explained why most cows in the 308 locations examined faced either north or south. To see if another large mammal would behave similarly, the researchers also looked at grazing and sleeping deer. They even looked at the oval hollows in the snow that deer make when they're resting. Once again, researchers discovered a north-south orientation. The team went on to conduct a follow-up study suggesting that the north-south orientation is linked to the Earth's magnetic field, although further researchers needed to answer the bigger question, what is the purpose of the north-south direction? An excerpt from the study states, quote, Our findings open horizons for the study of magnetoreception in general, and are of potential significance for applied ethology. They challenge neuroscientists and biophysics to explain the proximate mechanisms. Some migrating birds and bats use internal magnetic compasses for navigation. Still, the team says it's not clear what cows or deer would get out of it. 
They think it may just be a leftover from their ancestors' ancient wanderings, still stored in their DNA. Space Roar The Absolute Radiometer for Cosmology, Astrophysics, and Diffuse Emissions, better known as ARCADE, is a NASA program that uses a high-altitude balloon in radio detection. The ARCADE is lifted far up, preventing the Earth's atmosphere from interfering. There, the instrument can detect faint radio signals from ancient stars. The highly specialized machine can sense electromagnetic radiation. The data it collects in its missions may be critical evidence for understanding the universe. But instead of picking up radiation from long-dead stars, in 2006, Arcade detected a deafening noise that's now infamously known as the Space Roar. And while there are several theories, we still don't know what's causing it. In July 2006, the instrument was launched from NASA's Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility in Palestine, Texas, until it reached about 120,000 feet. There, the atmosphere thins and rolls out into the vacuum of space. While there, it picked up a signal that was six times louder than expected by astrophysicists and cosmologists leading the case. Since it was too loud to be young stars and far louder than the presumed combined radio emission from far-off galaxies, the powerful signal caused puzzlement around the world. This strange sound came to be known as the space roar. Dr. Alan Kogut, the scientist that led the team who used the arcade, said in an interview, quote, The universe really threw us a curve. Instead of the faint signal we hoped to find, here was this booming noise six times louder than anyone had predicted. And while there are some plausible theories, there's no concrete data that proves which one is right. Some theorize that it could be radiation from the earliest stars in the universe, gases of galaxies far away, or even an unknown, unidentified force or entity. There have been talks about flying Arcade again, as it currently rests in the Goddard Space Flight Center. There's also a possibility that they use an instrument on the ground for their next mission. The scientists would use the data from the Arcade 2006 mission to calibrate it. Over a decade later, experts still don't know what's causing it. The space roar could even hinder efforts to search for signals from the earliest stars formed after the Big Bang. Since the space roar needs a lot more research for any of the theories to be proven, NASA has simply concluded that, quote, the source of this cosmic radio background remains a mystery. Mpemba Effect The Mpemba Effect is a phenomenon in which it's quicker to cool water to a given temperature when the initial temperature is higher. It was named after Tanzanian Erasto Bartolomeo Mpemba, who as a teenager noticed warm ice cream mix would freeze faster than cold ice cream mix. Curious, Mpemba conducted experiments in his own house using water. He found that, like the ice cream, boiling hot water containers seemed to take less time to freeze than cold water. Mpemba approached Dr. Dennis Osborne, a physicist from the University College in Dar es Salaam who was visiting his high school. When the teenager asked why this phenomenon happened, he was laughed at by his teachers and schoolmates. But Dr. Osborne agreed to help him and carried out numerous tests in his laboratory back at the university. He confirmed Mpemba's original observations, and the duo published a paper together in 1969. The assertion that hot liquids freeze faster than cold ones seems counterintuitive, yet records of the effect go back to the writings of Aristotle, who wrote in his journals that, quote, water that has previously been warmed contributes to its freezing quickly. Scientists from various fields say they've observed the effect. For many decades, it was a formally accepted scientific phenomenon. In 2012, there was a spike of interest among researchers and the public when the Royal Society of Chemistry launched a public competition, challenging participants to explain its origin and cause. There is no official cause for this mysterious and contradictory phenomenon. Some theorize that the evaporation of hot water reduces the mass to be frozen. Others believe that colder water forms a layer of frost at the top that reduces heat loss, increasing the freezing time. And some others argue it must be due to an unseen interaction between temperature and gases or solutes in the water. The Mpemba effect is quite controversial, and many scientists are reluctant to abandon their research on the effect just yet. <laughs>